poor white man not. What's up, bro? What's wrong with weed, though, if it's from the earth? I'm going to show you something. Give me Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Hey, give me that in second edge. You know what I'm talking about? With the herb. It's not called weed. It's called marijuana. Nah, I ain't say nothing like that. <laughs> I ain't say that. <laughs> nah, I ain't say that. Give, give me Genesis 1 and 29 real quick. Now, listen to this, Rick. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. He said, I gave you the herb that's bearing seed. I can't, I can't speak against the laws of God. He said, I gave you every herb that's bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth. Read. Which is upon the face of the earth. And every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To, ye, to you it shall be for me. It says it shall be for what? It shall be for meat. It shall be for meat. Give me Psalms 104 and 19. What, what you do with meat? You eat meat. You eat meat. You don't, you, don't, you don't get a steak and roll the steak up and be like, you don't smoke a steak now. <laughs> what about a brownie? A brownie? Hey, look, hey, look. Let me show you something. Hey, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Look. See, you just want to get high. <laughs> no, nah, bro. <laughs> but it's the way you said it, though. you like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I ain't through with you yet. Give me Psalm 104 and 19, bro. I ain't through yet. I'm going to show you something. Now, nah. okay, now you know that, bro. It's for me. Okay, yeah, some people might do that. Just like if you was a cancer patient and your doctor prescribed you that to help you, you know what I'm saying, with your counsel. We can't speak against that. That's what he gave you for your medication. It is what it is. He want to eat his whatever, whatever. We can't, you know what I'm saying? We don't teach against that, bro. But Psalms 104, verse, let me see, let me see, 14, 14. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 104, and verse 14. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of a man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So he said herb is for the service of man. I'm going to show you what serves there for. Give me Sirach 38. Sirach 38. I better show you what service is that for, bro. Listen to this. It says it's for the service of man. So I'm going to show you how the herb was created to service us. Now you know it's plenty of herbs, bro. Not just happy. Because see, I study herbs. I study herbs, bro. People call me from all around the world asking me, hey, what can I get for this? What can you give me for that? You know what I'm saying? For the different ailments that they battle. So I study herbs. This is this, read. Sirach chapter 38 verse 4 The Lord has created medicines out of the earth He did what created what? Medicines out of the earth And he that is wise will not abhor them Will not abhor him So he created medicines out of the earth bro. It's made for medicine Not to sit up there and be like Eat you a brown and then go Man I'm high in the mother <laughs> No bro it's for medicine bro You know what I'm saying If you're doing it just to get high If you're doing it just to get high Then that's, that's against God's law that's just like me sitting up here, just like Esau prescribed certain medicines to people. I don't take Esau on medication. I take none but herbs. But some people got to take their medication. If you're taking their medication just to get high, then you ain't sober-minded. And God said, young men exhort to be sober-minded. What's the opposite of being high? Sober. You know what I'm saying? When I start smoking weed, that was one of the best damn things I've done, bro. That was the best thing I've done right there. You, so you got to stop. Listen to this. This is what the, this what the uh, prophets used to do with the herbs. They never, because you can have, it's some Israelite teachers, you can smoke weed. But you don't need not one prophet in the Bible smoking on no herbs. Listen to this, read. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 26. So I went my way into the field, which is called Ardath, like as he commanded me. And there I sat amongst the flowers and did eat of the herbs of the field. So Ezra said, I ate of the herbs of the field, read. And the meat of the same satisfied me. And the meat of the same satisfied. He ate the herbs, you know what I'm saying? We ate the herbs, that's it. So I can't tell you, bro, don't do it just to alter your mind. You know what I'm saying? Well, give me Titus 2, verse 6 real quick. Don't smoke weed to alter your mind, bro. 
Read what you got. Titus chapter 2 and verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good work. He said exhort to be sober-minded. So don't get drunk, don't get high. You can drink, but you can't get high. I mean, you can't get drunk. You know what I'm saying? The herb is made for medicine. So if that's something that the doctor prescribed you, because God said, give me that about the physician. So rock chapter 38. Believe it or not, the, hey, the most I got, the most I control of everything in this kingdom, including the police. Right. But you see how people get shot down and killed by the police because they disobedient to the commandments of God. Right. You know what I'm saying? If our people could keep the commandments, if you don't rob, if you don't steal, if you don't kill, if you don't break God commandments, what who can do anything to you? When you keeping God commandments, you sit up. When you when you breaking the law. Breaking God's laws and your enemies come up against you, that's when you're like, no, nah, you can't search my car. But if you don't, because you know you got something up in there. If you don't got nothing in there, hell, here you go. All right, look, do what you need to do. Hey, hey, do, hey, hell, go, and let me go and go by my day. Because I got a bigger mission. I got to wake these people up. Right. I don't, look, even though I don't want him searching my, I don't want him searching it. But I'm like, what the hell with it? Do what you got to do. I got a bigger mission. I got to come out here and teach y'all. Because it could have went a whole nother different way. I could have been like, man, and I hate that ass. I'm telling you, and I'm with a passion. I could have been like, hell no, I don't want y'all searching my car. I ain't done nothing. You pulled me over, no reason. And it could have been another black man getting shot down by the police because he would have been like, oh, yeah, he was reaching for something, and we had to do it. He got belligerent. But now I'm like, look, do what you need to do. What I tell you to get, look, Sirach 38 real quick. Start at verse 1. Sirach chapter 38 and verse 1. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him. For the uses which you may have of him, for the Lord hath created him. For of the Most High cometh healing, and he shall receive honor of the king. You see that? The, from the Most High. So the Most High set up these physicians. So that's why we sit up there and say, if you got a prescription for the marijuana, that's one thing. You don't got no prescription, bro. Don't get high. Now I want to ask y'all, y'all got any questions? What's up? You got any questions, bro? Yeah, what can I get a bottle like Okay, that's a King James 16 11 right there. You can go to the Baptist bookstore and you can get that, John. Uh, the, you know, on Bell You? Yeah. yeah, it's on Bell You. They got them back there. They got them in the back. They already know when you come in there to get them. They already know who sent you to get them. You know what I'm saying? King James 16, 16 11. 11. That's how you know so they took these books out. I'm going to show you why they took this out. Go to Second uh, Elder chapter 6, verse 9. This, these, these, six, these 16 missing books. Show you the uh, the Gentile. Uh, show you that the Southern Kingdom and the Northern Kingdom. Some of them because uh, was known by Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? It, it let you know that they was changed. They was uh, forced to be to call themselves Gentiles. Just like right now, what we what we known as what Americans, right? They was forced to call themselves Greeks. That's why when you get into the New Testament, saying ain't no difference between the Greek and the Jew. Just like right now, I sit up here and come out here and say, well, there's no difference between American Negro and us Jews. Uh, so you talking about the same people? Yeah, the same people, because we the Jews. That's right. But we can sit up here and say, y'all American Negro, because y'all why? Y'all don't know y'all Jews. You still living and you still following Gentile customs right now. You know what I'm saying? So we can come out here and be like, hey, it ain't no difference between the American Negro and the Jew. Which it really ain't, because y'all still Jews. That's right. Y'all right. y'all so-called African Americans ain't American blacks, right? Yeah, that's what they call them. Yeah, well, you Jews. You Jew from the tribe of Judah. Right. Jew, Jew, the word Jew is only short for Judah. That's it. That's all. Listen to this, read. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 8. This is why they took this book out, read. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob... God has said... Verse 7, then answered I and said, what shall be the pairing asunder of the times? So he said, what's going to be the parting asunder of the times? When the end of the world going to come, read? Or which shall be the end of the first? When it going to be the end of the first kingdom, read? And the beginning of it that followeth. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heels of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. So he said Esau is the end of the world. Esau is going to be the last kingdom ruling on earth when Christ come back. Right. Who ruled in earth? Who is Esau? Uh, 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 the 
red man. Damn right. Because he ain't white. <laughs> he red as hell. He, God said he was red, right? He said he red and hairy. He ain't red. Why you think he created Gillette? He got damn commercial Gillette. <laughs> Gillette. <laughs> hey, you know, y'all know a damn white man ain't nothing without a raise, I'm telling you. That's your real monkey. So they real caves. That's your real cave beast right there. We hey, we chased the ass up to the caves. That's in the Bible. I know a lot of y'all don't know that this stuff is in here. They won't read it in your church. That's all they want in your church is money. That's why we can't get no damn money because we read everything. <laughs> we can't we ain't get no money. We read it all. What you say? I know I heard this, this might be a rumor, but I heard something about Prince man giving the money. Donated to uh, Jehovah's I don't know. Yeah, they do all types of stuff, bro. I don't know. Yeah. Jehovah's Witness ain't, bro. That's uh, what's the name of that dude, Joseph Smith? But they go to uh, church on Saturdays, though. Uh, that don't mean nothing, though. Mean nothing. Do you know who that worship hold is up? <laughs> this they God right here. This they idol. Christ look like you, bro. This the this this the true image. This ain't Christ. This is the true image of Christ right here. They worship this image right here. That's why when they come with that, that pamphlet, the watchtower, ain't nothing but Edomites up in it. And he be on the front of it. Now look, it said Esau is the end of the world, Reed. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. That's it? Okay, so who who going to be, who, who kingdom going, who going to be ruling after Esau is taken down? Is. Jacob. Israel. Yeah. Remember Jacob's name was changed to Israel. We the children of Jacob. So when we talk about Israel, we ain't actually talking about the land. That is our land. We talk about a nation of people. Remember, Prince uh, Israel means a prince that has power with God. So when we talk about Israel, we're talking about us as being the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? God's chosen people. Now look, I'm going to tell y'all something real quick before we go. I see y'all brothers. Y'all got y'all beards. Don't cut them. Read this. Uh, Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. I'm going to read y'all some laws before we wrap it up. Read what you got. Look, book of Leviticus, chapter 21, and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Don't get no, don't, you got tattoos? Tattoos? Probably got one, Okay. No well, don't get no more, because that's against God's laws. That beard right there, that's a manly badge of honor. Yep. Up, yeah, you can, you can trim it, bro. You can trim it, but you can't go in your natural hairline. So wherever your natural hairline stop at, right here. and if it stop right there, up. yeah, you can't go down. You can't. You gotta let. It, you see how mine is. You see how he is. Yeah. It don't. They don't go in their natural hairline. You know what I'm saying? You can't go in your. You can't try to thin it all up. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, keep your beard, bro. That's a manly badge of honor right there. Well, you already keeping the commandment of God. You didn't even know it. You know what I'm saying? No baldness on your head. No baldness on your face. That's a manly badge of honor, bro. Now, uh, uh, read Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Listen to this. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they may make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Now that you know you're Israelite, God wants you to put fringes in the border of your garments. This separates us from the rest of the nations. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what these fringes are for, read. Throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. You put a ribbon of blue on your fringes. All these brothers got fringes on, and we wear them every day. Matter of fact, he got a shirt on up. Show him the shirt up under that, bro. See, we wear them on all our guns, and we wear fringes every day. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. That's what these for, to remember the commandments of God and what? And do them. And do his commandments, read. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whore. So once you repent, God wants you to put your fringes on and remember his commandments. And don't do the things that you used to do. Don't go after your own heart, your own mind, and your own eyes after the way you used to go. He wants you to remember his commandments. Right. Give me Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Yeah. Which one of y'all dealing with women? Which one of y'all got a woman? Both of y'all got women. All right, listen to this. I'm going to show you something. Listen to this. Read. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. You say if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. Meaning if you lure a woman in, if you lay your mac down on a woman that's not promised to be married to another man. Read. And lie with her. And lay down with her. Read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. 
What the, what you supposed to do if you sleep and have sex with a woman? You supposed to make her your wife. You supposed to make her your wife according to God. See how people don't give me Hebrews 13 and 4. See in our neighborhoods, you know how we were brought up. Don't marry a woman, bro. Don't marry her. You know what I'm saying? Look, man, don't, that's what they teach us. You know you love the hell out there, woman. But around your partners, though, you gonna act all tough, man. Yeah, man, they love them women. You know what I'm saying? You know how we do. I know I used to do it. I had women I really liked, <laughs> really liked. But cause I wanna be cool around my boys, I dog the hell out of them. You know what I'm saying? I thought they had when I knew I loved the damn woman, but I ain't wanna look soft around them, so I dog their ass out. Why? Because that's how we brought up. No, don't marry a woman. Don't love these hoes. Don't th you know what I'm saying? We the only people that talk like that. Why should I not love a woman? So what the hell you want me to do? You want me to love my partners who gonna cross my ass out one day anyway? You want me to act gay? Hell. You mean to tell me I don't want to I wanna be laid up with something at night. I can't right. lay up with you. Right. Hell you mean. <laughs> For real, though. No. Right. And then they be wanting you to share your women. That's wicked as hell. Put on the house. Sure, yeah, put the house up, bro. House your woman. You know you love the woman, and you sit up there, you ask her. Y'all know these damn sisters, they damn not do anything for you because they love you. They thought that's what you wanted. Now you a house with everybody. You calling her a hoe now. And when she is a hoe, then she shouldn't have did it anyway. She wanted to do it anyway. Read. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. He said marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is an honorable thing, bro. Don't be scared to marry a woman. That's the problem with our communities. We'll sleep, we'll have sex with the women, we'll have kids by these women, but we will not marry them. A brother be with a woman 15 years, no damn marriage papers. No marriage papers. No one, he loved the hell out of that woman. You've been with her 15 years, you ain't went nowhere yet. You know you love her. For real, though, God said marriage is an honorable thing, bruh. And don't let none one of these niggas in the hood make you think marriage is dishonorable. That's right. Our women is the only women that is known by baby mama's thoughts and wretches. The damn Chinese man do not call the Chinese woman a thought and a ratchet. You ain't never heard an Arab man. Matter of fact, they in your stores and they call your sisters thoughts and wretches. For real, though, read what you got. And the bed under foul. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And whoremongers and adulterers, God gonna judge. Give me uh, Genesis chapter 18, verse 19 real quick. Yep. This is what the most I want y'all to do, bruh. As y'all wake up and realize and know and learn that y'all Israelites, this is what the most, they, they got about four cameras on there. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. You heard that? The most I want you to command your children. How many of y'all got children? You don't got no children? Okay, okay, all praise. God said, look, so if you had children. He said, I want you to command your children and your household after them. Read. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So you're supposed to command your household after the way of the Lord. So you said you're dealing with a woman, you say you're dealing with a woman. And how long you been dealing with them? Like year, year okay, and how long you been dealing with your woman? Two years. Okay, God wants you to command your household, bro. He wants you to, but first you got to get yourself right. First you got to learn these scriptures so you can teach your woman how God, the proper dress, uh, a, a, a pearl, a, a tie you to wear, and stuff like that. What's up, bro? I got two Okay. Jeremiah, uh, he's seen kind of King Solomon. Yeah. What kind of woman? Interracial marriages. It was a white woman. Yeah, he had all, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> he had all, every every race you can think of, he had it. King Solomon had, give me 1 Kings 11, I'm going to show you something. Yeah. Uh, I think it's in 1 Kings 11 and One. 3 or 4 or something like that. I just won't get to the point. I want to say, yeah, it's 700 wives and concubines. And let me read what you got. 11 and 3. Listen to this. First Kings chapter 11 verse 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. You hear that? His wives turned away his heart from God. He started to sin. Listen to this. Read. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. He started to worship they gods. Read. Because he was dealing with the white woman. He was dealing with the Chinese. The East Indian. Read on. He was dealing with everybody. Read. 
And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David, his father. Because David only served the Most High. Even when David sinned, he still served the Most High. God said, look, David was perfect. Read. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Malcolm, the abomination of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an, an high place for Shema now, now give me the one in Nehemiah real quick that said, did he sin by these things? Taking wise. Nehemiah 13. Yeah. Now look, I'm going to show you something. So he, did, he dealt with all these strange wives because you're supposed to be do interracial marriage. I'm going to prove that to you. Here go right here. Read. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. So they took them some Chinese women and some Japanese women. Read. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language. They couldn't even speak their own language. You want to know why? Because the mom is the first teacher of the kids. So guess what the mom was teaching them? How to speak Japanese and Chinese. Not how to speak Hebrew. Read. But according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them. So look, Nehemiah wasn't no joke. <laughs> he said, I contended with them. That's what we do when we go out on the street contend with our people. He said, I contended with them. He said, I cursed certain of them and I smote them too. You know he mean to smite somebody. So the prophets, yeah, he putting them to death. The prophets, the prophets didn't play, bro. Read up. Right now we fishing. <laughs> We fishing right now. The day coming, bro. The day gonna come. We gonna come out here, and it ain't here. We ain't gonna. We ain't setting up no speakers or nothing. We just gonna march through the land. We gonna march through the land, bro. We gonna be deep as hell. I promise you, it's happening. Read. And pluck off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, "Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons." He said, "You shall not give your daughters to their sons." Read. Nor take their daughters unto your sons. Nor take their daughters to your sons. So it's no interracial marriage. The black man shouldn't be with the white woman. The white woman, I mean, uh, the uh, black woman shouldn't be with the white man. Right. The black man shouldn't be with the Chinese woman. The black woman shouldn't be with the Chinese man. Right. Read. Or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? You hear that? He said sin. He said, did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Read. Yet among many nations were there no king like him. And there was no king like King Solomon, read. Who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. So he let strange wives cause him to sin. Strange wives cause him to sin. So the interracial marriage is against God. Right. Neither one of y'all ain't dealing with no white women, ain't he? Okay, I'll pray to the most. Hey, but you said that in the spirit. <laughs> you said that in the spirit. All right, now look, I'm going to show you something. All right, look. So what we just got to do, we dealt with marriage. So according to God, okay, one more. What you got? About that whale thing, about uh, Jonas getting swallowed. I understand it. Okay, go to the book of Jonah, chapter 1. I ain't going to read all of it. He said he ain't understand it because you like how I fish. I'm going to show you why it happened, though. It happened because he was being disobedient. He, Jonah was a prophet. God said, look, go to Nineveh and prophesy. He hopped on a boat. Said, I ain't going to Nineveh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want nothing. Just like we, we disobedient as hell. Your job, actually, y'all supposed to be doing the same thing we doing. You supposed to be going. We supposed to be in all neighborhoods spreading this gospel. Going, traveling all around the world, bro. We do this all over, bro. We go everywhere. We ain't just, we, we ain't just Memphis. We international, bro. We go everywhere and preach this gospel. That's what the prophets did. That's what we do. Now, look, uh, let me see. I'm just getting to the point. Uh, start at verse 1. Listen to this. Start in verse 1. Listen. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. So he said, look, go to Nineveh, that great city, and do what? And cry against it. That's what we're doing now. We're crying against America. This is what we commanded to do. We commanded to go out here and cry against it, bro. Even if y'all two just listen, that's all we need. Y'all two can reach a thousand if you repent. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Read what you got. For their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish. You hear that? God told Jonah, he said, look, go prophesy against Nineveh. 
But he said, hell, Jonah rolls up the fleet of Toshes. He's like, I'm finna get gold. I ain't finna go through this. Read up. From the presence of the Lord. So he tried to flee from the presence of the Lord, bro. Read. And went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. And he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he tried to flee from God. So I'm just going to jump down. You can read the story on your own. Jump down to verse 11. I'm going to show you what happened. Read. Verse 11. Then say, not a fact, start at verse 9. So I'm going to show you how they know. These nations always knew about our God. Listen to this. Read. Verse 9. And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid. Because what had happened once they was on the ship, it was rocking back and forth. Read. And said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. So now he, the ship rocking back and forth. They were like, man, hold on, man. Why you flee from God? That's now he know why the ship rocking back and forth. Read. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may have calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tipped uh, to posters. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So he said, Look, man, look, if y'all want to stop this, uh, this storm from going on, Jonah said, Take me up and cast me into the sea. Read. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the man rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not. For the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. So look, let's jump down to the point. Verse 15, read. Verse 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the man feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. It said a great fish. It was big as hell. Because y'all know dinosaurs in the bow. I ain't finna go through all that right now. <laughs> Bruh, so, dinosaurs in the Bible. You know, uh, white man always be saying, well, if the, white, if the, if the Bible true, how they, where the dinosaurs at? The dinosaurs in the Bible. For real, though. Huh? No, nah, it ain't in Genesis. They in Job. They in the book of Job, and they in um, the book of Second Andrews. The book of Second Andrews. Now, look, we better wrap it up. Give me Matthew 26 and 6. Okay, y'all come in real quick. Let me show you something. Hey. Let me show y'all something. Hey, give me uh, Ephesians. Give me Colossians. Nah, give me Colossians chapter 3 real quick, verse 19. Y'all been disobedient to y'all parents? I want to ask y'all something. Do y'all love God? Y'all come up a little closer. I'm going to show you what it means to love God, first of all. Give me 1 John 5 and 3. Now, you know, can you give God a hug? Huh? No, you can't. Can you give him a kiss? So, you, it, the only way to love God is to love him through his actions. Listen to this. Read. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. You hear that? It says commandments are not grievous. So what it means to love God? It says, hold on, I want, you, I want you to tell me what this said. Read it again. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God. It says, this is the love of God, read. That we keep his commandments. So what it means to love God? To keep his commandments. Now look, read me, give me Colossians 3. What I say? Verse 19, I think. Uh, yeah, 20. Read, listen to this, read. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20. Children, obey your parents. You, you hear that? If you love God, it say what? Children, obey your parents. Because you can't give God a hug and a kiss. To show God that you love him, you got to keep his commandments. He said, this is what God said. He said what? Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. It's well-pleasing to the Lord. Give me Sirach chapter 3. No. Sirach chapter 3. Listen to this. Read. Sirach chapter 3, verse 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be saved. You hear that? The scriptures say, do what your father tell you to do that you may be safe. Because, see, when we disobey our parents, guess what can happen? Bad things can happen. Read that again. Read. Hear me, your father, O oh children. So he said, hear your father, children. Listen to your daddy. Listen to your mama. Read that you what? And do thereafter that you may be safe. Do what they tell you to do so you can be safe. Because um, I'm going to tell you what my mama used to always tell me. A disobedient child don't have a good end. 
Y'all see a lot of these people that's walking around homeless now? You see a lot of people that end up dead on the news? That's because they're being disobedient to their fathers and their mothers. Right. So read that one more time. Read. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. So if you want to stay safe, you don't want nothing to happen to you. You're supposed to listen to your parents. Read on. For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children. Your daddy is the ruler over you. Your mother is the ruler over you. If you love God, God said what? Read that again. For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children. He hath given, he hath given the father honor over the children. Read. And hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the son. And guess what? The mother is over the son. He confirmed the authority of the mother to be over the son. The, your dad is the ruler over y'all. Read. He is the Lord in y'all household. When you look at your dad, you're supposed to see Christ right. in your dad. Did you know Christ looked like you? Christ is a black man. Christ looked just like you. Christ looked like your daddy. Yes, right. Read on. Who? This right here, this was, this was a lie taught to us. This was taught to us by the Romans. This is a man named Cesar Bunger. That is not Jesus Christ. That is Cesar Bunger. Now look, listen to this. Read. Verse 3. Whoso honored his father. You hear this? It said, whoso honor his father, read, maketh an atonement for his sins. It's like making atonement for sins when you honor your father, read. And he that honoreth his mother. And he that honoreth his mother, because you got to honor your father and mother. You got to do what's right. You got to obey them. You can't disrespect them. You can't talk back. It said, he that honor his mother, read. Is as one that layeth up treasure. It says one that layeth up a treasure. Your way will become prosperous. Y'all want to pro? What you want to be when you get old? A who? A professional golf player. Okay, and what you want to be? You want to be a basketball player. Well, if, look, if you want to be those things, you got to honor your father and mother. Right. If you want to stay safe, read up. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children. You want kids one day? You want kids one day? So, do you want your kids to disobey you? You gonna let your kids do whatever they want to do? If you had a little baby, would you let that baby walk in the street or you would tell that baby, look, don't walk in the street? Why would you want that baby to walk in the street? You don't want it to what? So why you think your daddy telling you to obey him because he don't want you to what? He don't want you to get hurt. He don't want you to die. Read on. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. He that uttereth his prayer. I want to ask you something. Do y'all pray? If you want God to hear your prayers, you got to honor your father and mother. Yes. I want you to hear what the Bible say again. And see, that's why a lot of our kids don't understand uh, coming up. When you disobey your father, God ain't hearing your prayers. Right. Matter of fact, back in biblical times, we used to stone them in front of everybody. Right. We can't do it now. We're under Christ. <laughs> Read what you got. Verse 5. Whoso honors his father shall have joy of his own children. So if you honor your father when you have kids, you're going to have joy of your own kids. Because believe it or not, you're going to have kids one day. Get on that. Get on that.